One thing that I see happen a lot is that people tip way forward. So they're like going along like this and they go to shorten their reins and they do this and they like looking at their hands to shorten their reins. Right, hello everyone, I'm Amelia and today we are talking about rein length, helping you figure out what is the correct rein length for your horse. Let me know in the comments if you tend to have your reins too long or too short or if you feel like your, your reins are constantly growing. I had a student one time that said she had growing reins, which was kind of funny. Um, but rein length is a really important part of getting your horse round, getting your horse connected. So I'm excited for this video. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also check out in the description box, I have a free PDF download on the canner and we're also doing a 30 days to round challenge that you might be interested in checking out. So the first thing that is important with your rein length to understand is how to shorten and maintain your rein length. So if you're here and you wanna shorten your reins, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put both reins in one hand you're gonna slide down with the other hand and then you're gonna take the reins back. And then if you need to shorten the opposite rein, you're gonna put both reins in your right hand, slide down your left rein, and there you've got your rein length. Now, how do you maintain this rein length? What you wanna do is that you want to be pushing between your thumb and your pointer finger to keep the rein from sliding out of your hand. So I'm not gripping on the reins with my hands, I'm keeping the reins from sliding by putting pressure between my thumb and my pointer finger. A lot of times horses are really clever about getting the reins out of your hands. Like they'll feel you tip forward or when things get hard, they'll just kind of pull and get a lot of rein out of your hand. And this is bad because then the horse kind of is training you instead of you training the horse. So you always want to be pushing with your thumb onto your pointer finger and this will help you to have that awareness. I really like using reins that have stoppers or I also like thick rubber reins so that I don't have to grip so much. So throughout your ride, you're going to have to make a ton of adjustments to your reins. So for example, I usually start my ride on like a completely loose rein and just let my horse walk for, you know, a good five or 10 minutes and stretch their neck and look around unless they're unsafe to do this. I like to let them go on a loose rein. Um, then for my warm up, I take them up and keep them a little bit long and low to start with. So like as you move up the levels and as you warm your horse up, in general, you're, you shorten your reins more throughout the ride. So if I'm going along here and I'm going to shorten up my reins, I usually shorten up my inside rein first. So I put both reins in my right hand. I slide down my left hand. I take light contact. Now I shorten up my other rein. One thing that's really important, like when you shorten your reins, is that you do it gradually and seamlessly. So if I'm going along here and I'm gonna shorten up my reins, one thing that I see happen a lot is that people like tip way forward to shorten up their reins. So they're like going along like this and they go to shorten their reins and like they really like, like they do this and they like looking at their hands to shorten their reins up. So you can see how terrible that is. And also my horse stopped and he was like, Amelia, like, what are we doing here? So what you want to do is you really want to keep riding the rhythm of whatever gate you're in. So here I'm at the walk. So it's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. When I shorten the reins, I actually bring my hands forward. So I kind of shorten up the reins. Now see how my left hand is more forward. My right hand is more forward. Then I gradually bend my elbows close my leg to push my horse into that contact and now i've got him rounder to a shorter rein so i'm going to go ahead and pick up the trot in general it's since the walk doesn't have any impulsion you don't want to spend a lot of time like on a really short rein at the walk especially if your horse is a little bit green or young um so here I'm just going around. This is kind of what I would say a good warm up frame for him. The way that you know that your reins are the correct length is if you have your horse in the frame that you want, your hand should be just slightly in front of the saddle with contact. So contact means that there's 
tension on the rein basically, like that I have the feel of my horse's mouth in my hand, which I do. So I have contact, my hands are in front of the saddle, and I like the frame that I have with my horse. If my reins are too long, here's what's gonna happen. So if my reins are too long, now you see how I no longer have contact. My horse is no longer in a frame and I also can't really steer him very well because now that if my reins are too long, I see this happen a lot where people are like going like this and going like this and doing just like all this crazy stuff to try and steer their horse. And when you do this, it throws you off balance too. So part of the reason that rain, short reins are important is that it helps you find your center and keep your balance. So watch what I'm gonna do when I shorten my reins. Hand, right hand forward, left hand forward, steady contact, wait for him to accept it, gradually bend my elbows, and now I have that rein length correct. Now, what happens when you change direction? So when I'm going on a circle or a bending line, I want my horse looking slightly to the inside. If I change directions, I'm going to have to shorten a little bit my new inside rein. So like here, I'm going to have to shorten a little bit my left rein so that now he's looking to the left. Sometimes it, it kind of depends. Like sometimes you can get away without changing your rein length when you change direction. So like, for example, if I change direction here to the right, I was able to get away with just kind of bringing my right hand a little bit back and I didn't have to shorten my rein, but also look at my hand position. It would be a prettier picture if I shortened my right rein and was able to keep my hands a little more forward and together. So that's part of why short reins win gold medals, as Charlotte Dujardin said, is because when your reins are a little shorter and your hands are able to be just like forward thinking here in front of the withers that really allows you to do invisible rain aids where i can just kind of move my wrist and ring finger and um, i don't have to do like a big like seesawing motion or disrupt my seat in order to get my horse to be round the other thing that you can do like you've probably seen me do a few times is if he pops his head up and like comes above the contact, sometimes what I'll do is I'll widen my hands. This is exaggerated, but see how I have a little more of a wide hand to get contact on his mouth. Now I'm driving him on with my leg. I'm saying, go to the hand. And then as he takes that contact, so now he's reaching his neck out. Now my hands are slowly going back together so that I can get his neck to reach a little more out and stay round to the bit. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. And then if I want to do a stretch circle, I just gradually let the reins come out of my hand and I'm no longer pushing between my thumb and my pointer finger because I want to allow those reins to come out of my hands. Good boy, Jack. So rain length is really important and it's important that you get good at adjusting your reins without disrupting the rest of your body. Um, it's also important that you always think about when you shorten your reins, hands forward and kind of push your horse to your hand because a big part of roundness is always getting your horse round from back to front. So it's like hind leg through the back and to the hand. It's not about pulling your horse backwards from front to back. And that's also true like moving up the levels as you teach your horse collection and engagement, you really wanna get them sitting and engaged in their hind end more, lifting in their back and thoracic sling, and then coming round and through to the contact. So 
I really hope this video helped you out and be sure to check out in the description below. I have a 30 days to round challenge coming up, which is going to be fantastic. So if you're struggling with getting your horse round, definitely check that out and be sure to subscribe to our channel. And yeah, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if this video is helpful. Thank you.